Thank you for coming to Pay the Pool Man. Today we're excited to walk you through our employee training video for our new Pay the Pool Man Plus app. Make sure that you keep your eye open because we've been adding a lot of updates and have a lot of updates to come. So keep your uh, software up to date and uh, you can take advantage of those features. Okay, so after you go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and type in Pay the Pool Man Plus, uh, you'll be able to notice it's got a red plus on top of the icon. Um, you, once you get that all downloaded, you're going to go ahead and uh, open it up. All right. And uh, we're going to see that you have to log in. Now, <clears throat> on our old app, you had to log in uh, many times. And this app, uh, it does not. So you want to make sure uh, once you get logged in, you're good to go. Um, and we're going to go ahead and put that information in here. And just so you do know, uh, before we log in, if you do need to reset your password, you can just go ahead and click that. And it's going to go ahead and have you put in your uh, password or your email address, just like you did before. But now we're going to go ahead and get back to uh, logging in to Pay the Pool Man. So once you log in to Pay the Pool Man Plus, we're going to take you straight to our sync page because we need to download some information to your device uh, about you, about your routes about uh, possible service stops. And we can see right here that it tells us the sync's complete. And uh, we'll go ahead and hit OK. And so now it's gonna go ahead and do some calculations on that data. And so if we go ahead and we look at these bottom tabs here, we need to make sure anytime that we're asked for our location that we allow it um, because certain features will not be available if you deny that. So we need to make sure that you can always do allow while using or allow uh, once, but uh, we recommend allow while using because we want you to not have to keep clicking this over and over. Okay. So it's going to pull up your route and uh, obviously uh, we're not in San Francisco. Um, so uh, we, <laughs> we could be closer to our route um, and we got our dashboard over here and we got our sync uh, page over here as you, uh, have items building up, they're going to go ahead and start listing on the items to sync. Um, we highly recommend that you leave your auto syncing on. That way you don't really have to worry about it um, unless there's major changes. So uh, if we go ahead and go through the process, um, you're every single day, no matter what, you're going to always want to sync. Okay. And that's going to start your day. And if there's been route changes or any, any other type of changes, uh, we want to go ahead and have fresh up-to-date data. So let's go ahead and sync right now. And this process could take up to a minute depending on how large your company is, how many customers you service and whatnot. All right. So now that our sync is done, uh, we can go ahead and technically start our day. Um, but uh, maybe you are in a area that does not have good cell phone reception. Um, if that is the case and you're going to be offline a lot, we would recommend that you download the data for offline usage. And so we'll go ahead and click that. And once again, this will take about a minute or so, depending on how many customers you have and how much data we have to bring in. This is going to bring in all the images that we need to use throughout the program. This is going to bring in the mapping. Um, that way, when you're, you're out and about, that you can access that data. Okay, so we can see that now it's getting, giving us a green check mark that we are good to go. So we'll click All Done. And once again, you're going to want to make sure that you do the syncing in the morning first thing. You don't want to do this while you're sitting at a job site because that's just a waste of time. Okay. Um, and lastly, we have our red delete all data and log out button. If for some reason you have to get out of the uh, app and uh, maybe restart it or whatnot, uh, this will delete all that data out. Fair warning, if you do not have auto syncing on and you have not synced yet, you will lose your data. So now um, we've downloaded our offline maps which you don't have to do it unless you're going to be in offline mode. And if you are in a bad cell phone area, we would recommend just turn, turn your phone to airplane mode. Um, and in that case, I'd also recommend you turn your auto syncing off. Okay. Um, but for this uh, purpose, we're going to go ahead and leave it on. Okay. So, uh, real quickly, if we go to view our route, this once again is going to show us our route for the day. 
Uh, it's kind of hard to see because uh, we're zoomed out on this map, but uh, your map, you should be able to see all your pins and you can click any one of these arrows and that will pull up your navigation and take you straight to that location. Okay, and as you complete your service stops, they will be checked off on this uh, spot right here. Okay, so now that we are uh, on our main dashboard, uh, we are gonna go ahead and kind of go over a overview of what we have here. So uh, right now, uh, we already have an image uploaded um, and we'll show you how to do that in a second here, but we highly recommend that you do that. Um, and uh, we really recommend that you do a nice smiling picture. <laughs> you want, because uh, this information will be public, so you do want to make sure that you know, folks are seeing your best side. Okay. Um, and right here we have our sync count. So just in case uh, we're, we're offline and our sync is building up, this kind of shows you, you know, uh, how much you need to sync. Um, that way you can kind of go in and do it if it's building up too much. Um, this is showing us that we have a online status as far as we're connected to the internet via our cell phone data or Wi-Fi. Um, and it will go red if you turn it off, okay? Um, right now we have uh, some service stops and uh, we don't have any repair stops, but we'll go ahead and put some in there. That way we can show you how to do it. So now we're gonna go ahead and start by logging a service, okay? And some of these features, depending on your company, maybe they are not uh, gonna show up and that's really just because uh, your employee permissions. Some companies have certain things turned on and some do not, okay? But we're gonna go ahead and show you how all those look. So right away, we can see on our service stops, it lists them all out for us and these blue boxes will turn green once uh, they've been uh, done. Now let's say like today is Thursday that we wanna do a Friday pool, right? Just like in our old uh, older application, you can go down to the arrows on the bottom and you can fast forward. So here we go, we got our Friday, we can keep going, we go Saturday, Sunday, and uh, maybe we just wanted to look at our route, right? And we can go backwards as well, okay? And maybe we just wanted to look at our route, which is totally fine, and we give you a quick button to just go back to our original uh, page, okay? So uh, once again, here is our route for the day. And we're going to go ahead and click on Clint Barton here. And we can see that we have a tag that we need to do the front pool. Okay. And uh, right away, these three little uh, fab icons on the right are going to be giving you different options. So if your customer has a gate lock code, well, uh, it's going to show up this little lock symbol for you to touch. And it's going to tell you the gate code to get in. Great. Nice and easy. If there is a, a little file here and we click on it, that means that there is an actual service note specifically for that customer, okay? If you don't have a service note, don't worry. This will not show up for you, but uh, they, it's kind of uh, something to give you a heads up. All right, and so we have a navigation icon here, and so that will take us directly to this customer's house, which is fantastic. Um, so right away, we're going to see that... Uh, we have a big red unable to service button. So this is what you are going to use if you show up to a customer's house and say the gate is locked, you can't get a hold of anybody, uh, there's something that's preventing you from servicing that account on that day. Well, no problem, we got you covered. We're gonna hit unable to service and it's gonna go ahead and it's going to GPS locate you, okay? And we can see right away that it gives you an option to add up to five images. And you can do that simply by clicking on any one of these icons. This bottom one here is going to be for camera. And this one right here is going to be to take it off of your actual device. Now, depending on your employee permissions that your company sets up, one of these might not actually be showing up because we give them the ability to make you either use the camera or give you the option to use both or just your actual phone device. Okay. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll just uh, click on uh, our little images here on our simulator and we'll just throw a one in there. Uh, maybe we'll throw two for fun. There we go. All right, so now we can see that we have our two images up here. Okay, maybe it's pictures of the locks or a dog out or whatnot. Um, maybe you made a mistake. Maybe you didn't want to put one of these pictures up here. 
Well, that's no problem. All you need to do is touch any one of these images and then you can simply delete it out. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and throw that one back up and in there. All right, now down here, we're gonna enter the reason why the service is unavailable. And we can say, all right, could not service the account due to the dog being out. All right, let's go ahead and hit save. And it's gonna go ahead and log that information and take us back to our dashboard. And you can see right away that one of our five uh, service stops are completed, okay? So uh, now, if we go back in to uh, log our stops, we can see that this customer, he is now checked off. So we do not have to worry about that anymore. But let's say maybe you completed a service and you need to go back into it because you realize you forgot something or uh, you need to edit those things. Well, not a problem. You can go in here and now uh, this blue button at the bottom says edit service instead of start service. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll go into that here and well, we can go ahead and go into it now. So if we click on it, uh, the, our edit service stop, we can update our readings, update our chemical usage, add more pictures or notes, add a repair request, or even add an extra to a bill. So <clears throat> this is really uh, helping you to be able to jump back into something even after you've left or uh, maybe you realize, like I said, you just forgot something. So now uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a regular uh, service stop. And so we can see with Tony uh, Stark here, our icons look a little different. And, and it's like we said, if there was no gate uh, codes for this customer, then the gate lock will not show up. And then if there wasn't a special service notes, uh, that won't show up either, okay? Um, if we look at the other options that we have, uh, we have our equipment log, we have a customer balance and a contact customer. The equipment log is always gonna show up. The customer balance and contact customer is depending on your employee permissions, okay? So uh, if we click on customer balance, it's quickly gonna tell you what the customer's balance is. And this is really to save you tons of time so that if a customer comes out and they're like, hey, can you call your boss, find out how much I owe? Oh, no worries, I could pull it up right here. And it tells you exactly just what the amount is. No additional data, none of that. So uh, the other one is maybe your company give you the ability to call your customer or, they, or text with them. Well, we can hit contact customer and we can see right away that we can call them or send them an SMS message directly from this location. So let's go ahead and close that. And uh, lastly, our equipment log, if we click on that, we can see this customer has no equipment, but let's go ahead and add some equipment on to the, uh, this customer. Um, so right here, uh, let's go ahead and select our type, okay? Maybe it is the main pump, all right? And that is all that's required to go ahead and save it. Um, before, we used to have you add a lot more data, but we realized you're in a rush. Maybe you just want a picture of it. Uh, and you can add that data afterwards, okay? So uh, once again, uh, you can use your camera. We're just gonna use the uh, folder option here because this is a simulator. All right, you could snap a couple photos and we'll save it. And here we go. Now our equipment log is saved and that can be accessed in Pay the Pool Man by the office or by you or any of the employees that are servicing this account in case there's a repair or items need to be brought, bought, okay? And so uh, let's go ahead and go back. All right, now that we're back, let's go ahead and open Tony Stark back up. And let's go ahead and start some service. Okay, so we can see that the design looks similar to our uh, older application, but we've added some new features in here. So once again, we can still slide to the side to make it very quick to get in and out and hit your, your different uh, buttons. But now we have given you a new option to go ahead and edit these readings to show something that might not be shown. So maybe you're using a digital tester that might go outside these ranges. Maybe you have a 7.1 pH level instead of the common 7.0 or 7.2 and you wanna log that, no problem. We're gonna hit this little icon to the side and we're gonna go ahead and say 7.1 and then we're gonna move on. And we can still do the other ones and maybe we'll put in a, a random conditioner level here. 
And so we're really giving you flexibility um, on what you can test. And so I'll just type in a bunch of random numbers here. All right, and your LSI calculation will keep uh, filling out. Let's go ahead and put our filter PSI at 20. All right, and so we can see right away that our water is very, very corrosive. Um, and if we look down at these uh, little dial indicators, the greens uh, represent it being in an acceptable range. Um, the reds, that reading is completely out of whack. Um, and then it's also orange when you're barely out of the, uh, the safe zone. So um, all of these are color coded and they do change as you change these uh, to proper uh, readings. So uh, we can see that we have a check mode button here. Well, uh, let's go ahead and click that. All right, so now we can see that our LSI calculator has went to the bottom and now we can kind of scroll around, right? And so as we scroll around, we can change these levels to go ahead and get that to update the uh, the program here. So maybe we change this to 7.6 and right away we can see that it's been updated and we can see how much that actually changes our LSI calculation. And to get out of the check mode, you just go ahead and click it again. All right. And right down here, uh, we would have our uh, filter, our last filter cleaning listed at the date. And then if we had a salt cell cleaning, it would be listed here as well. That way you can quickly access that data and find out. Um, right away, you can find out uh, what the previous readings were. If you need a question, and we can see for this guy, we don't actually have any, but uh, they would show up right there for you to quickly look at. And that'll give you the last, I believe, uh, month and a half to two months of uh, service stops. So now we're gonna hit next and proceed on. And we can see that we've brought our water readings over to our chemical usage page. And this comes in real handy when we need to add items uh, into the pool. Like uh, maybe we did our testing, we entered it all into the, the uh, program, but now uh, we kind of forgot what, what those actual readings were. Well, we list them right here and it's gonna help you out, okay? Um, so uh, just like before, you can enter in your, uh, your different chemicals that you use. And if your company has the uh, live chemical tracker on, you'll actually see that populate right here, okay? And so once again, if you need to add maybe some algicide, you can click this here and we can throw in some copper. Maybe we do six, six ounces. All right, and once again, we can view our previous usage as well. Um, so let's go ahead and go next and move on to the next section. So once again, uh, we give you the ability to add five server stop images. Uh, typically, you're going to want to take pictures of what's going to prove that you were there. And you're going to want to go to your normal spots that your customer goes to. So you're going to go to a, take a picture of the jacuzzi if they have one. You're going to take a picture of the skimmer basket, the pump basket, the shallow end, the deep end, or maybe a water feature. <clears throat> And just like uh, we did with the equipment, um, we can add these pictures in, right? And we can just go ahead and throw them through. You'll probably use your camera the majority of the time. All right, and all these pictures are all random sizes. And once again, if you need to delete pictures out, you can hit the delete image button, right? So we can just remove that out of there. And if you need any private notes, these are notes that are gonna populate directly to your company, not to a customer, you can go ahead and type it in there. All right, and we'll hit next. All right, next we're gonna see our work checklist that our company has set up for us. Um, if you do, if your company does not use checklist, that's okay. You'll just not have this uh, view that will pop up. And we're gonna go ahead and check off the items as we complete them. And we're gonna hit next. And if your company has public notes turned on for you, these are notes that are gonna go out on proof of services or what we like to call our email door hangers. Um, you can type that in here. 
a great option that we have is the ability for a quick note. So these are common items that you would typically use. Maybe you shock the pool and you're like, hey man, no swimming for four hours. Well, there you go. You can just click it and move on with the rest of your day. Because everything that we do in Pay the Pool Man, whether it be in our Plus application or our Pay the Pool Man application, is really to speed things up. All right. So now uh, we can see, uh, we can quickly get a glance of what our next stop would be. If we had a repair that we still had to get to today, we would actually see that populated right here. Um, and this screen right here is a very, um, there's a lot that you can do here. Uh, obviously, we want to complete the service stop, but before we do that, we have a couple options that we need to explain. So in our request repair, maybe you showed up to service an account and you noticed the pump was leaking or the filter was leaking and you need to, you need to report that. Well, no problem. We got you covered. You would just click here. Once again, you can add in your pictures and then you can give details. Okay. Um, and that will go directly back to pay the pool man. And, uh, that way the office can take care of it, have all the information that they need to go ahead and uh, make those estimates and get approvals. Um, next, maybe you added a item, uh, to the pool that needs to go onto the billing. Uh, and well, guess what? We can do that right directly from here. So add to billing. No problem. Let's go and select the item. Uh, maybe we added some conditioner. No problem. Um, right here, uh, we can see there's a blank spot and that's because this company has the pricing turned off. So it's, it doesn't allow me to change the pricing, which is fine. Uh, that's, that's what they wanted. So I'm going to hit the save button and you can see it put it up right here. Well, um, now we can actually keep adding more items. So maybe we added a cleaner diaphragm as well. We want to save that. And so we can see we're building this list of items to add to our billing. And now when we're done, we'll hit save extra work. And now those items have been saved. Um, maybe our other option that we have here is you showed up and you, you, you were just supposed to do a server stop, but maybe the filter is just super clogged. Maybe, uh, you can't even clean the pool because there's a, an issue. Well, no worries. You can complete a repair that was not scheduled. So once again, you can complete a repair that nobody assigned to you right away. And so, uh, right away we can, uh, take pictures, uh, and you know, this is going to be very useful, especially with filter cleanings. You can do a before and after pictures. Uh, those are great, um, to prove that it needed to be done. Um, right down here, it says assign repair to, well, this is a new repair because we don't have anything assigned to us, but if maybe there was some, uh, estimates that had been sent out to the customer that they approved, you'll actually have estimates listed here. Okay. So you can actually click that, assign it to that estimate. And then that way, uh, it, they all get tied together. Um, and then we can enter in a description of our repair that was completed. You'll want to be professional on this because, uh, that can be sent out to the customer in certain situations. Um, down here, we have an alert for the office. That's going to just go ahead and notify the office of any special information. And then when you're done, you'll just hit save. Okay. And then next we have the shopping list, but we're going to show you how to work out the shopping list on uh, one of our next pages. So now that we're all done with our service, let's complete our service stop. So until you do this step, the service is not done. If you close the app out, if you leave the app for some reason, None of that data is going to be saved anywhere. Um, so you want to make sure that you complete the stop. Now that the stop's completed, it's counted it down. Okay. Now all the door hangers go out if you had them turned on and all of that can be done. Okay. So we've went through how to log a server stop, right? And, uh, even if we go back, once again, we can edit that stop for some reason, if we needed to, we can update all those readings or add different items to it. Okay. Okay, now that we're back at our dashboard, let's go ahead and take a look at another feature. So how do I get this picture up and into the program? Well, no problem. We're going to actually hit the user info button. And then we can see directly from this page that if we have our location services turned on, if our notifications are on or off, and then the information that our company has where we reside. Okay, so right from the get go, you will not have a picture here. You'll have a little placeholder. 
And uh, it's as simple as you can take a picture off of your phone, right? So we can pull it out from one of our albums, or we can take a picture directly right there. You're gonna wanna make sure it's a bright picture. That way it's easily uh, seen. Once again, make sure you smile. Um, as soon as you do that, it's gonna update here, and it's gonna update here as well. Um, and then it's going to actually pop up in the main Pay the Poolman program for it to be used in different areas. So now let's go ahead and see how we clock in and clock out. Okay, so clocking in and clocking out, if your company uses this, great. You just click this button right here, right? It's going to GPS locate you, okay? And then we can see right now, we our status is clocked out. Well, no worries, let's go ahead and clock in. So now uh, it clocked us in and it recorded our GPS location. So this is done to make sure you're not sitting at home, that you're not at a liquor store. This is to make sure that you are starting work where you're supposed to start work, okay? And when you're done for the day or when you need to clock out for lunch or whatever, you simply hit clock out. So now we can see that that record has been recorded here, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and go back and let's go ahead and go to our shopping list. So we click on our shopping list icon and right away we can see that we have a couple uh, different uh, numbers displayed at the top. And we're gonna go through what these numbers mean, okay? And so with our shopping list, we have three different statuses, okay? Well, technically four, but three that you can uh, visibly see from the employee side. So with our shopping list, we have a requested status which once we add a item to our shopping list, that means that we need it, okay? So maybe you show up to a account and you're like, oh man, that skimmer basket's toast. No worries. You're gonna go ahead and add it by clicking this green button, which we'll go through in a second here, and that will automatically put it to requested. This is gonna let the company know that you need that item. Or really, you if, they, if your company sends you to the store, you can see that you need that item when you go. Well, once that item is purchased, right, then we are going to change that status is that it's ready to load. So whether it's sitting at a warehouse waiting for you to load it onto your truck or it's somewhere else, this is letting you know that that item has been bought and it's ready to be placed on the truck. Well, the, the next option is loaded. So this is when you physically receive the item and put it on your truck. And so if we scroll down, we can see that our items are listed here, okay? Um, so right now, uh, an item that has been bought that we haven't loaded yet is in our ready to load section and we can see that it is a new chlorine floater, okay? Um, and it's for Bruce Wayne and he needs one. Um, this, item, this little uh, bubble right here that says to be build, that means that once we install it, it's automatically gonna be added to our extras for our billing cycle. Once again, removing the extra steps to kind of get that going, but we'll go through that in a second. Um, next, uh, if we look down here uh, in our loaded section, so this is an item that's on our truck. Uh, we have an item for Peter Parker. We have one new pump basket, okay? And so, uh, and these are just random uh, notes that we've set. And then third, uh, in our requested uh, status, so something that we've asked for that we haven't nobody's bought yet, um, is a pump basket from Mike Norton. Okay, so we have that pump basket from Mike Norton, and we can see that there's an image down here. Well, we thought to ourselves, why why just have a, a, a blank list when pictures are worth a thousand words, especially when it comes to ordering the correct part? So this gives you the ability to, to take pictures when you add items so that whoever's doing the buying can actually make sure they get you the right part. Well, if you click on the picture, it'll actually pull up the, a larger picture for you to examine, okay? So we'll hit close. Um, and next we're gonna talk about is how do you change status? So the status could be changed at the office or by the owner or by the office staff, but uh, for you in the field, maybe you went over and you bought the item. Okay, well, if you bought the item, you're gonna go ahead and swipe to the left and then you are gonna go ahead and say loaded. So you loaded it onto your truck, okay? So look, it's no longer in our requested, it is now loaded, which is great, right? We're keeping track of where that is. If the office 
pulls it up, they can see that it's been loaded into the truck. Great little feature. Okay, now that we're loaded onto the truck, we're gonna go ahead and say we, we've been at the customer's house and uh, you saw that shopping list button right before the completed stop. Well, maybe we check our shopping list and we see that Michael Norton has that pump uh, basket that we need to install. Well, no problem. We're gonna swipe to the right and we can either delete or mark it as installed. And once again, this has the to be build option set to it. So if we hit the installed button, it disappears from our list and now it's been added to our billing. And that's great. We can see our numbers are reflected at the top here, keeping everything nice and organized. And once again, given the uh, pool owner or office staff, whoever's doing that, the ability to see the flow, okay? Um, so now let's go in and say, well, how do we request an item? Well, no problem, we got you covered. We're gonna hit this plus button here. And right away, we can see we have a little bit of data that we could fill out, but really we can get this pre-filled. So uh, let's go ahead and do a search. And this is gonna search through our income items, okay? And let's say that we want, uh, let's say a seal plate, just cause it's random. We're gonna click on that. It's gonna pre-fill these items with us. Um, and really uh, you can, you don't have to select an item through our search. You can just fill out a name here. Maybe it's not listed or maybe you don't wanna use that feature, no problem. You can just go straight to the item name and a customer is not required because maybe you need something that's not for a customer but for yourself, then you don't have to select one. But let's go ahead and put one in there because I like to put them on there. So uh, let's go ahead and say, uh, let's do Jason Colson here and uh, we can select how many items. So maybe we need two, right? And we could just drag it to get more or less, okay? And right down here, our last question is uh, <clears throat> our description, right? So we can change this to whatever we want. We can add anything we want here. But uh, right below that, we can see, should this item be billed to the customer after usage, okay? So once again, this is going to put it into our billing automatically when it gets installed or not. So uh, that one you have to, to figure out how your company wants to do. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and add some pictures because we love pictures, right? You can see that we're just adding them in there. And there we go. And once again, we could still click on those pictures if we want to delete them. Um, and so uh, if we hit save, we could be done. Um, but let's go ahead and add it to our billing. That way you can see what it's like. So let's hit add to billing and it uh, pops open a new box below and we can assign the income item. Well, right away, because we used our search feature, it's already assigned it, right? But we could still change it if we needed to. Um, but if you do use the search feature and select the item off there, it's already using an income item. And as we can see, it's already pre-filling out the description, the item name, all of that, and the price but we can change it if we need to, but let's go ahead and hit save. Okay, so we hit save. We can see our shopping cart's been updated. We now have a requested showing. And at the bottom here, here we go. We have a new item sitting in our requested. We have two of our pump seal plates. And once again, we can click on those items and we can go ahead and get a, a closer view. So now it's been requested, we can go on with our day, right? We don't have to sit around and and kind of call anybody. We don't have to text anybody and wait for responses. We just send it in and we move on with our day, keeping you on the move, right? Because that's really what this is all about. So let's go ahead and move on to a repair. So uh, we did a sync. That way we could uh, pull up uh, our repair stop because uh, I didn't have one scheduled here for our test. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. <clears throat> We're gonna click on log repair and right away we would have all our repairs listed and just like on our service stops, we can actually go backwards in time or we can go forward. You know, maybe uh, we want to do a repair early. Well, we can fast forward or go back, right? So I'm going to hit the back button because I want to do today's repair. And just like before, we click on the customer's name. Um, we can see right here that uh, we have our GPS uh, navigation. Uh, if there was gate codes, there would be a lock here. And then if there was a special note specifically for that customer, like 
make sure you do this every time you go there. Uh, that would populate right here. Um, we can see right at the top uh, that we have view repair. So if we click on that, we can see the details of our repair without actually having to start it. Maybe you just want to check out what you need to do for the day. We got our equipment log here, right? But that would show, right? Um, we have our customer balance again. So this customer does owe a lot more than our other one that we tested. So we could still notify our customers, right? That we're on route, uh, that we're starting the repair, that the repair has been completed. We can contact the customer. We can contact the customer or we could just start the repair. So let's go ahead and start the repair. So once again, we can see it's going to pull up our GPS location and make sure everything's on the up and up. Um, our items that we have to repair are going to be listed right here next to our uh, green check marks, right? Uh, we can attach up to five images. And remember, images are great, especially if we have to send out proof that something was done. So we'll just keep throwing images in there. Um, and then a description of the repair completed. This is public information so that if your company, when they schedule the repair, has an auto repair completed notice going out, you want to make sure be tactful with what you write. So we can say that a new pump seal was added. And then we can say no extra parts were used. All right, and we can go ahead and save that. And then we can see that it's syncing our data and right away our repairs are complete. Okay, and lastly, um, if you have the option turned on um, to be able to access uh, deeper features in Pay the Pullman, not Pay the Pullman Plus, um, you would not have a calendar here, but you would actually have an icon showing you to be able to access Pay the Pullman, and we'll show you what that looks like. And so we can see if we have those options turned on, we can access pay the pool man directly from here. No more having to go to a different app to access it. And that completes our employee training video. Make sure that you keep your application up to date because we will have many updates and new features coming out uh, very quickly here. And we'll be updating these videos as well. Thank you very much and have a great day.